Well, our crypto baller, BK, is over at the Plasma to tell us what. BK, take it away. Yeah, sure. So let's talk about Ethereum in particular because that was in the news this week. And so now we have to talk about, okay, how is this going to trade? What are the catalysts over the next couple months that could actually move this? So I identified three. First of all, let's talk about Ethereum futures. Right after the SEC came out and said, Ethereum is not a security, the president of the CBOE came out and said that was a hurdle to us launching Ethereum futures. So one would think that perhaps Ethereum futures are not far off. They already have an index based uh, Ethereum index, and you would think that futures are next. So that could be a potential catalyst for Ethereum. Number two, the Augur platform. Old school folks will remember that Augur was one of the oldest ICOs. Platform has been in development for about two or three years now. And what it is is it's a decentralized prediction market. Now, what's interesting about this, this will probably be one of the biggest decentralized apps launched on top of Ethereum. Remember, you probably, Tim probably remembers CryptoKitties, how it slowed the system down. We'll see with Augur, if it doesn't slow the system down, that could generally be a positive for Ethereum. And then finally, the third thing, what I'm calling software mining. Ethereum is going through somewhat of an upgrade where they go from hardware mining, proof of work, to something called proof of stake, which is similar to a software mining. That's going to come over the next couple months. Vitalik Buterin mentioned something today about combining a couple of the upgrades in one. That, again, could be a catalyst for Ethereum. So now let's just take a look and see how Ethereum is trading here. Here's what I find interesting about Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Bitcoin in orange, Ethereum in the blue. Here's your lows that you've had before. Now, what's interesting is Bitcoin is right on the lows, in fact, breached it a bit, but Ethereum did not. So relative value-wise, Ethereum has been trading a little bit better than Bitcoin. So if I were going to be long this market, and as I am, I would overweight Ethereum at this point in time. We're going to get to a tweet, but I have a question for you, BK, first, and that is um, the high in Bitcoin coincided with the launch of futures for Bitcoin. Is there concern that the launch of Ethereum futures won't be a catalyst? Uh, I, I, certainly, it's always a concern. It's unclear to me. I think it might have just been coincidence that we had futures and then all of a sudden we had a sell-off from perhaps tax selling uh, for perhaps a lot of different things. That sell-off could have occurred because of different reasons than necessarily futures. All right. Let's get to some tweets for you. Uh, Crypto Adam asks, as a hodler, how concerned should we be that we're getting close to the price of production of one Bitcoin around 6000 in the U.S.? That's a good question. That's a great question. In crypto atoms. So yeah, roughly <laughs> around 5820 or so, I think is the highest estimate I've seen on what it costs to mine. And so here's what's interesting about it. As if we get below that level, miners will start to turn off their rigs. But that doesn't mean that supply decreases. Bitcoin supply every 10 minutes right now, you get 12 and a half Bitcoin. So we'll see what happens. There could be an incentive for some of the bigger miners to say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to sell every 10 minutes 12 and a half Bitcoin. Bitcoin I'm going to hold on to it. So it's something that I'm watching very, very closely because we really haven't seen it in this market, at least to this magnitude. All right. Next tweet comes from Oak Lawn Lover. Um, really? This person tweets, is there a realistic Hi, chance Bitcoin can <laughs> fail and go I mean, broke? Uh, nice, Oak Lawn, uh, Oak Lawn Lover. All right. So uh, go broke. I mean, it's a decentralized system. There's nothing to necessarily go broke. Uh, but I would say we are still early stages. This you got to think of this as a venture capital type investment. This is still kind of proof of concept. A lot of these things haven't been shown yet. They have to scale. There's a lot going on here. You're very, very early days. And just remember, MySpace existed well before Facebook. Tech disrupts itself. So just because you have Bitcoin today doesn't mean in 10 or 15 years Bitcoin is going to be the leader. 